Hi, welcome to the third video. Um, today we are going to be talking about what builds societies and where do they build them. So before we get into talking about our particular type of society, I want us to spend a little bit of time talking about human beings and also how we got to the type of society that we're in. Today what we're going to focus on is us as human beings. It's a particular type of animal species that evolved to have um, certain attributes. So for today, we're focusing on what it is that builds societies. Um, the terms that you need to know for today, um, and I'm going to elaborate on each of these sections, but that we um, are pack animals. We evolved to be physically a certain way and to require sort of um, certain elements of life um, physically. That cognitively, in terms of our brain, we're really good at some things and not that great at other things. Um, that we have a certain set of emotions that um, are advantageous to us for particular reasons. And then we're going to conclude with the idea that the society that you live in right now is a big experiment because we did not evolve to live in a society that works the way ours does. So to begin with, let's talk about us as pack animals. Um, so the human species, Homo sapiens, evolves into existence it gets revised all the time as new discoveries are made, but it's about 300,000 years ago. So I want you to think about that for just a moment. You are probably in your 20s right now. Um, as, a, uh, as a species, we lived from about 300,000 years ago to about 11,000 years ago as hunter-gatherers. Um, that was the only way that every human being on Earth lived. Almost 300,000 years of all of life having certain patterns and us evolving a body and a brain to fit into that environment. About 11,000 years ago, we go through the agricultural revolution, which I know for some of you who aren't into history, that's a, a kind of a boring factoid. Um, the reality is it changes our species, um, at least as of right now, permanently and pervasively. Um, but that's still, that's 11,000 years ago. And then we live for about 10 and a half thousand years before we have the Industrial Revolution, another, if you're bored by history, another big boring event. Um, again, it changes our species fundamentally, but you don't even live in that kind of a society. What you live in is a digital society. Digital societies come into existence properly with, um, with the advent of the internet. We had computers back in the, I mean, as far as back as like the 60s and 70s. The internet does not exist when I'm in college. And I was in college from 1988 to 1992. There is no internet. We had computers, but they were basically glorified typewriters and calculators. Um, so the digital world that you live in has existed since about the mid 90s. And I want you to think about that for a moment. This all of this biological reality that I have, the body that I have, the brain that I have, all of that that's a biological reality um, evolved mainly or basically about 300,000 years ago. And now we're putting it in an environment that is totally different. So let's talk about what that environment was like. Um, to begin with, let's deal with the idea of us as pack animals. Um, uh, there are basically three four ideas that I want you to get. Um, in terms of pack animals, we lived in groups of about 100. Groups of about 100. Um, sorry, that blue doesn't show up all of that well. I'll use black next time. Um, when I say that we, that we lived in groups of 100, I don't mean that like in your dorm you've got 100 or so people. I mean as far as you knew, your, your uh, group of people, your tribe or whatever, was 100 people, and you may not encounter another human being for the rest of, or for your entire life. Um, at most, you might encounter one or two other tribes, but you basically, as far as you knew about the world, there were 100 people in it. That's it. Um, think about the fact that while you may be friends with or in your family have, you know, a few dozen people, you are aware of the existence of billions of people. You interact, even if it's in a passive way, with 
hundreds or thousands of people every day. When you watch a TV show, every person who contributed to that TV show, you are interacting with. It's not a great, you know, deep interaction, but you're interacting with those people. Um, every time you get on the internet, you are interacting with not just the people who you're you know, interacting with on social media, but every single advertisement. That is a person who has written something or performed something that is then um, being, uh, being brought into your life and that you're having to deal with, even if it's just to click it to get rid of it. You don't live in a world that you were designed to live in. You were designed to have about 100 people, which meant, which is kind of point two, there were no strangers. I mean, imagine what that would be like. I go to the grocery store, I live in a little tiny town, and uh, I still see people that I don't know when I go to the grocery store. And, you know, you, it's not like it's some horrible uh, moment or experience or something, but it is something that I did not evolve to deal with. I evolved to be born into a group of about 100 and to know every single one of them. I might not have been best friends with every one of them, but nobody was a stranger. Every person in my group, I knew. And I knew in at least a relatively intimate way. Nowadays, whether you're, when you go to the grocery store, or walking across uh, town, or if you are on campus at any point, walking across campus, you are used to the idea of visually identifying and then disregarding person after person after person. That's just not what we evolved to be like. So a group of 100, no strangers. Um, the other thing uh, was that because we evolved to be hunter-gatherers, hunter-gatherers weren't competing with each other in their groups. Everything was cooperative. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Um, I mean, obviously, and I, I don't say this to try to egg you on into having some adversarial relationship with the other people in this class. But the reality is, if you can't outcompete other people in our society, you end up in poverty. You end up homeless. You end up without enough to eat. Our society is competitive in a way that we as a species, again, did not evolve to, to be. Um, the last point about us as pack animals. We were relatively, and I don't want to make this sound like it was just some harmonious utopia, but we were relatively equal. Part of the reason for that relative equality was the fact that nobody had anything. Basically, you woke up, you went and hunted and gathered, and then you brought it back to the group and cooperatively, so you went out and cooperatively hunted and gathered, and then you divided up what was uh, what people had gotten relatively equally. Um, there wasn't property, so there weren't rich and poor. In those days, and uh, this is something that comes as a bit of a surprise because we kind of had the stereotype of back before civilization, there were like cavemen and it was all this uh, sort of violent um, war of one against all. And the reality is, um, most people were equal, and even the gender differences that existed, and, and anthropology suggests that there were gender differences, but there was relative equality, because what you had was, in general, men going out and hunting, women gathering. That was the general gender division of labor. But everybody is contributing, and everybody sees everyone else contributing to, um, to the, uh, the survival of the group. So this is socially what we evolved to be in. Obviously, what we have nowadays is way different than that. All right, let's move on to what we evolved to be like physically. In other words, this body that you have, that most of us take for granted, and that I'm going to suggest, and I'll say this over and over and over again during the course of the semester, you should absolutely reject the messages you get from society about evaluating yourself in terms of your appearance rather than what your body can do. But God knows, we get tons of that, which, again, I'm going to suggest to you, is not the way we evolved to be. So let's move on to physically. In terms of this, uh, in terms of us having a, an animal body, what was that like? Well, physically, first of all, 
almost all life was outdoors. As compared to nowadays, where we spend almost all of our time inside, we go outside to exercise or to get to our car or whatever, that your body, the body that you have right now, evolved to be outside almost all the time. So that's point one. Point two is that it was active. We worked physically three to four hours per day. I know, like, I try to work out, and I try to work out for about an hour. I'm, like, barely scratching what our ancestors with this type of body did in a day. They were active three to four hours a day. Now, it's not like they were, you know, lifting weights or sprinting or whatever, but it was physical active, uh, physical exercise that got them their food. And it took them roughly three to four hours a day, which just really quickly on a side note, their work day was three to four hours. So we think we've got tons of progress right now, right? And obviously we do, you're watching this, you're nowhere near me, this is like magic to our ancestors that we're talking about. But at the same time, you're getting this college degree in order for you to be able to go get a job that works, what, eight hours, nine hours a day? Our ancestors worked three to four and then they were off. Now, they could also have been eaten by lions, so it wasn't all like fun and games. All right, three to four hours a day. Um, what else do we need? Oh, also, they would cover, on average, five to ten miles per day. Now, that wasn't necessarily all running, um, but they were just used to the idea of physical movement almost all the time. Um, last point, and this is a point I always particularly make to my traditional college students who are 18 to 20, um, they got enough sleep, eight to 10 hours. <laughs> like I know, if you're in college, uh, at least my students who are traditionally in classrooms, I, they all laugh when I say that because of course you don't. But biologically speaking, that's what you are designed to get. If you are not getting that, what you are doing is putting yourself at a disadvantage for the entire day. You won't, um, you won't be able to move physically as fast. You won't be able to think as fast or as, um, as coherently as if you were getting that. All right, that is what we evolved to be like physically. Let's move on to what we evolved to be like um, cognitively. So what we're talking about now is what our brains are particularly good at. Cognitively, what our brains evolved to be good at was, first of all, analyzing visual information. Um, we will, when we start talking about society um, very specifically, what we're going to talk about, oops, sorry, what we're going to talk about is the idea, there you go, uh, analyzing visual information. Um, what we will talk about is the fact that you, um, over the course of your day, do this so well that you're not even aware that you're doing it, but you go into situations and scan and interpret every single visual thing in your in your field of vision. Um, the reason that you are able to do that without even being aware of it, without even thinking about it, I mean, think about the idea of you going into a regular college classroom. You walk in and the what you are gonna be confronted with are maybe 30 chairs, 30 tables, 30 different people, plus a teacher. Um, you are confronted with whatever's written on the board. And, it, and it's not that, like, it's not that it is, that I'm saying that, oh, this is something that is incredibly difficult and, or anything like that, but I just want you to think about the quantity of visual information that you have to make sense of, and you do it without even trying. That's how good we got at analyzing visual information. It was super useful for us when we were animals, 
or sorry, when we were living out like on the savannas of Africa, because you had to tell, is that thing in the distance a rock or is it a lion or a cheetah? Is it something that is safe or something that's dangerous? So in order for us to be able to survive, we had to evolve to be very good at analyzing visual information. Second point is that we had to become um, good at solving immediate problems. I talked to you already about the fact that um, that basically we hunted or gathered three to four hours a day. You had to solve the problem every day you woke up and is like, and you had to solve the problem of what were you going to eat and how were you going to avoid being eaten by a predator that was higher on the food chain than you. Your problems didn't involve, oh my gosh, what, what am I gonna do next week or next month or what are my career options? None of that existed. All of our species, and which means your brain, the brain that's in your head right now, is good at solving problems that are right in front of you. The problem for you is that you have problems, even this course is a weeks long course. You've got to be thinking about how you're going to manage not just this lecture or the readings for today or the test that's coming up, but the things in the future beyond that. And that's just one element of your life. The problems that we're presented with are way beyond what we're good at dealing with. Third point um, is that we are good at solving problems with tools. Solving problems with tools. Um, Basically, what that means is exactly what it sounds like, and it's the reason that you are right now watching this on a device rather than seeing me in person. Um, where we're going to go with this idea of solving problems with tools is the idea that the more tools that we, um, that we uh, bring into our lives as human beings, the more it changes our way of thinking about the world and our way of behaving in the world. All right. So this video has already gone to 17 and a half minutes. I apologize for that. I really wanted to keep them short. What I'm going to do is stop this one right now, and we will come back to, for the next video, um, our issues of what, how we evolved to be emotionally and um, this as a big experiment.